Welcome to the software side of our ultimate Windows Home Server guide on NCIX Tech Tips. I'm just going to give you guys a brief overview if you haven't already watched the hardware guide. So we've got our Fractal Design Array R2 case with its integrated power supply, six 3 terabyte hard drives. We're using an Intel Micro Mini ITX motherboard with a low power Xeon CPU, 8 gigs of RAM, which is kind of unnecessary. 4 gigs is probably more than enough. Uh, we've also got an LSI RAID card, which is a hardware RAID 5 solution that we're using for those six hard drives to achieve an enormous amount of storage space. More on that in just a moment. And finally, we've got some Kingston memory. And then for the boot drive, we're using an Intel 520 series 240 gig SSD, just for the ultimate and reliability for the boot drive of the system itself. So stay tuned and we're gonna show you what you can do now that you've assembled the hardware with the software aspects of Windows Home Server 2011. Feature number one for me of Windows Home Server and probably for anyone who's ever lost a serious amount of data due to a hardware failure or a virus or whatever else caused it is the automated nightly computer backups of all of the computers on your network. There is a limit of 10 computers, but you can do whatever you want. Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, laptops, desktops, whatever you want. It takes all of the files, and what's cool about this is you can actually browse your nightly backups file by file and pull an older version of a file. Let's say you accidentally you know, let's say you didn't accidentally delete a Word document, but you accidentally deleted all of the text out of it and saved over it. Oh no, how do you recover that? You just go back to yesterday's image, you pull out that Word document, and all of a sudden you can just copy paste from that into your new one. Perfect, right? It also saves a backup of the entire Windows OS. So that means just by taking a disk, popping it into the computer, so you have a hard drive fail, you throw in a new hard drive, you take your disk, you put it in there, you copy the entire OS from the Windows Home Server over the network, and your computer is restored to exactly the way it was before it failed. This has saved my bacon already several times in the last couple of years. I've had hard drives fail in my Windows Home Server, haven't lost any data. I've had hard drives fail in my computers, I haven't lost any data other than you know my web browsing history from that particular day because it backs up every single night. Now the first question people often have is how do you set up the backups? Well the first thing you do is you just go into your network, you find your home server, in this case it's called TechTip Server, you view the device's web page and boom, you download the software for Windows. You do that on every computer on your home network that you want to back up and it will walk you through the steps. Now the other thing that's really cool about the backups is that they're incremental. Instead of taking full images and full files every single time, which will add up really, really fast, it takes a full image and all of your files once and then any further images. So the next day, if you haven't changed anything, then it'll add almost nothing to that particular backup file. Whereas if you change something dramatically, then it will add it to that one. So it actually manages all of your files very, very intelligently in that way. Now one other feature of Windows Home Server that I personally use all the time is remote access. It's really easy to get going. All you have to do is click turn on and if only it was that easy to get things going. Just click the turn on button with everything. Am I right guys? You click turn on and as long as you have a UPnP enabled router, no problem. It's all set up. So what remote access allows you to do is a couple different things. Now I want you guys to bear in mind that for the purposes of this demo, I'm using my own Windows Home Server, which is at home. This is Windows Home Server V1. This is the older version. So it might look slightly different with 2011. You have access not only to shared folders, so you can access all the different shared folders on your Windows Home Server, but also, check this out, computers. So I can log into any one of my supported computers since I'm using all Windows 7 Ultimate. They all support remote desktop connection. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to log into my media PC. I'm going to select modem just for quickness. I can enable files to be transferred from the remote computer to this computer. So hey guys, if you ever run into a situation ever again, oh I left that PowerPoint file I needed on my desktop, log right into your desktop, click connect. Here we go. And all you got to do is drag and drop it from your remote desktop connection here onto the desktop of the computer that you're actually working from. Pretty cool, hey? Now let's talk storage. Those other things are cool and very, very useful, but the Windows Home Server is the cornerstone of your digital storage life. In my home, I have about five PCs, not a single one of which has a storage hard drive in it. 
They are all running SSD boot drives and that's it. Everything else is accessed over my Windows Home Server because using a gigabit network connection, I can easily stream or transfer files whenever I need them on demand from the Windows Home Server. This adds a few benefits. Number one is that it's safe. You can see here the Windows Home Server we have configured has almost 14 terabytes of usable storage space. That is a RAID 5 array of safe storage space. Even if a drive physically fails, I'm not going to lose my data. I have a chance to swap in a new drive and repair it that way. So that's really cool. Also, you eliminate that issue that everybody has where you take your, your vacation photos and you copy them onto your laptop to show someone and you copy them onto your desktop to archive them and you don't know which photos are where and you can't keep track. You're, you're duplicating your storage. You're not giving your the full value of all the storage you have plus things can easily get lost in the mix if you decide oh no I've got these on my desktop and you delete them maybe some of them weren't there you keep all your storage centralized you don't have that problem anymore so let's talk about the performance I said I use a gigabit connection and a gigabit connection is definitely enough for me so I've got a Corsair showcase this is a tech tips episode it's a video file I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna copy that from the desktop here connected via gigabit to the Windows home server we are getting transfer speeds in excess of 100 megabytes per second so it's almost as fast as local mechanical storage except you have all that additional convenience you can then easily stream it directly off the home server instantly like that now we had this demo running in the background where we were creating an image of this machine onto the Windows Home Server. Now we're gonna actually restore files or folders from that machine. So we can see the manual backup we created. Next, I don't have anything on volume G, so we're gonna use volume C. It does take a little while to open up the volume because there's some compression involved to save space. So that's gonna use the CPU on your Windows Home Server. The CPU on your Windows Home Server isn't terribly important, but this is one thing that it does help with if you have a more powerful CPU. Or if you have, um, say for example, something like Air Video Server running on your Windows Home Server to stream movies and transcode them on the fly, that can benefit from a better CPU as well. So you can see right here, we end up with the entire directory structure of the computer that was backed up. If we go into the documents, we can see, oh, you know, oh, my Battlefield 3 save game, it got corrupted and blah, 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 I need to get it back. All I gotta do is click next and I can restore it to any directory I want and the wizard will copy the files to your computer just like that. We've only talked about storage so far. What about other aspects of your computers? What about little Sally's PC? Little Sally never updates her antivirus. How are you gonna know if you have to go in there and do it for her or like, yell at her until she does it herself because the last thing you want to do as the IT guy in your household is run around removing viruses. It's much easier to be proactive about it. Windows Home Server helps you with that because from the main console all you have to do is look at any alerts for a PC on your network. So we're going to go ahead and view the alerts for this computer. This computer does not have virus protection turned on or it's not installed or it's not up to date so I immediately see that there's a problem there. Also, Windows Update is turned off. Maybe it's intentional, maybe it's not. You can set it to ignore this alert, or you can go, oh shoot, Windows Update's not on. I can turn it on now. So in conclusion, Windows Home Server is pretty much the single best way to manage your data. As long as you have a good Windows Home Server and you administer it correctly, it can save you an enormous amount of time and headache and even money. I mean, imagine if you lost files that you actually needed for work and you had to recreate them. It can be disastrous to lose your data and I personally absolutely hate it. Okay? It's... <laughs> Honestly, I was about to go on like a rant. Of, okay, you know what? Let's just keep going with the shot because I hate losing data. I really do. Um, so anyway, one of the other things that Windows Home Server gives you a fine amount of control over is user accounts. So here I'm setting up an account for Slick Camera Dude and I'm giving him access, whether it's read, write, read only or no access to any of the shared folders on the Windows Home Server. He also gets his own little folder that'll be created and then subsequent users can either be given or not be given access to those folders. So you can control who sees what and when. Thank you for checking out our ultimate Windows Home Server guide as well as our overview of the awesome features of Windows Home Server. Don't forget there are also add-ins for Windows Home Server that enable additional functionality. So beyond everything you've seen here, it is highly customizable as well. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this one from your favorite e-tailer, ncix.com. Access. So with a simple setup process, you just click turn on 
if only everything was as simple as clicking the turn on button, am I right? You click turn on and as long as you're... <laughs> Couldn't hold it together. <laughs> Shot three, remote access. Now one... <laughs>